Welcome to a short video on exponential functions. First, let's look at the exponential equation, y equals a b to the x. This is our general form, and each of these letters means something. Remember, we have to start with the a, we start, and then we can grow. So a is the initial value, or where you start, and b is the growth rate. The a value is also the y-intercept, so 0, a, and that means you go 0, and then you go up to the y-intercept. And so this is where the equation, the exponential equation, crosses the y-intercept, and that is also your starting value. So let's do, oh, and also the x is usually time. It can be other things, but it's usually time. So we're going to use it as time and these next two situations. So for the first example, a town has a population of 18,000. So this right here, 18,000, is your start. You start at 18,000. So we have y equals ab to the x. Since we start at 18,000, we know that our start value is 18,000, and it grows. So if it grows, that means it's getting bigger, and that is exponential growth. And so we want to know what the population will be. So if it's growing, we need to know the growth rate. Remember, we always start at 100. So our population was 18,000 people. And that at that point is 100%. And if you grow 2%, it is 100% plus 2%. And that gives us 102%. How do we write that as a decimal? Remember, percent means percent out of 100. So you're dividing by 100. Or, and that moves the decimal over 2, which gives us a growth rate of 1.02. And don't forget that our growth rate has to be bigger than 1 for it to grow, and 1.02 is bigger than 1. So our growth rate is 1.02. And we're going to put it to the x which is the time, and this time is year, in years. So to figure out what the population will be after 11 years, we're going to go y equals 1800 times 1.02, and we're going to put 11 years up here. Now we could have done like 1.02 times 1.02 times 1.02 times 1.02 in our calculator, but that would not be um, very efficient. This is why we use this formula. We use the formula so we can take a shortcut. So when you put this in your calculator, be sure to do the 1.02 to the 11 first, and then you multiply by 1800. If you are using a graphing calculator, you don't have to worry about that. It will fix it itself. Now we're going to round to the nearest whole number, which means we can't have a partial person. So the actual answer we had was 22380.738. But again, we can't have a partial person. This is not a person yet. So we are going to get the answer of 22,380 people after 11 years. All right, let's go to another example. The next example we're going to do is, an, uh, is decay. So if you want to try Try to do this one on your own. You can hit pause and try it on your own, and then come back and we'll do it together. Okay, so new car is purchased for $52,300. So it's starting here. This, the initial value, is the start. And so y equals 52,300 is our starting value. We are now looking for our growth rate. What is our growth rate? And then we're going to raise it to time, and our time again is going to be in years. So and when a car depreciates, that means it's going down. So initially we had 52,000 was our amount for our car, and that is 100% of the value. What we're doing now is we depreciate, we're dropping in value by 18.75%. So since we're going down, what we're going to do is we're going to go 100% minus 18.75%.
and you have to add zeros and all that good stuff or just use your calculator and you'll get 81.25%. So that is the rate of decay. Again, we need to write this in math. So we're going to divide it by 100. Percent is percent out of 100, which then moves these decimals over. And we're going to go ahead and use all of the decimals. So it's a nice, accurate answer. So this is our general equation right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in how many years? We're going to put in eight years. So let's write our general equation. Y equals 52,300. 0.8125, and again, how many years? Eight years, go here. Now notice that your growth rate is a number that is less than one, but greater than zero. So that it does indeed indicate that we're gonna have decay. Okay, so once you put this in the calculator, um, if, you have an, if you're using a handheld calculator, be sure to do this part to the eighth first, then multiply it by that. But if you're using a calculate, graphing calculator, you can type it straight in and you should get 9933 no sorry $9 and 19 and that is the value of the car is the value of the car after 8 years and it said to the nearest cent which is why we did two decimals so let's look and see what we would do if we had just a table. So first of all, if we're looking at this, we're going to see what the change is between each of these. So from 3 to 3.6, looks like we've added 0 0.6. And if you add 0 0.6, you do not get 4.32. So this is not a linear growth. Remember, linear growth is when you add and you add and you add, but we are not adding. So instead, we know this has got to be an exponential equation. First of all, we can tell that it's exponential growth because it's getting bigger. So it is exponential growth, which means that our B value is going to be greater than 1. Again, let's see where we started. Remember, where you start is the initial value, and that is going to be the y-intercept, 0a. And 0a is right here. Okay. So since y equals a, b to the x, and you already have your start value, y equals your start value is 3.6. And you just need to find your b, which is your growth rate in this case, to the x. All right, so how do we have find the growth rate? We know that it is some number multiplied by 3 to give us 3.6. And some number multiplied by 3.6 gives us 3.42. And you're working down the table. That can be a little difficult to do. So instead of working down the table, an easy way to do that is to work back up the table. So since you're going the opposite direction, instead of multiplying, you will divide, and that'll give you the number that you need. So if you have 3.6, and you divide it by 3, remember we're going back up the table. So 3.6 divided by 3, that will give you 1.2 as a growth rate. 1.2, 1.2. So let's check that. So let's go back down the table. If I multiply by 1.2, 1.2, let's check it. So type 3 into your calculator and multiply it by 1.2. You should get 3.6. You do. Do it again, 4.32. Do it again, 5.184. So we have checked that all of these growth rates are 1.2. So 1.2 is the equation. So g of x is 3.6 times 1.2 to the x. So it's a growth rate. We didn't talk about this, but we could talk about what is the what percent growth do we have. Remember, if we're at 100% and now we're at 1.2, so 100% is 1. If you think of 100% divided by 100, move the decimal over. So what does 1.2 equate to? 1.2 would equate to 120%. Because if you move the decimal over, it's 1.2. That means we've had 20% growth rate. Wonderful. Now let's try a decay problem. 
Okay, so we're going to look at a decay problem and a problem. It's a little trickier. We do not actually have our starting value. So we don't even know what the starting value is. Uh-oh. So we've got to find the starting value and the growth rate on this one. So this is a little trickier. Um, again, to find the growth rate, it's fine because we A, we know it's exponential. We've been told it's an exponential function. If we only had two points, we could think it's linear, but you usually need to have three points before you can tell if something's linear versus exponential. But I'm telling you this one's exponential. That's what we're working on right now. So we're just going to make those good assumptions. Again, since we don't know what the growth rate is, we're going to go back up. We're going to divide going back up to find the growth rate. And again, the growth rate doesn't change. So let's find this out. Let's get your calculator. And you're going to do 1.54 divided by 2.21 to get this 1.54 divided by 2.21, and that gives you a decimal, a big decimal, 0 0.69683. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to round to two decimal places. So if we're going to round here, this 9, the 6 rounds this 9 up to 0, which then rounds this up. So our growth rate is going to be 0 0.7. So that means as we go down, we're going to multiply everything by 0 0.7, but we can't go down yet because we still don't know our numbers going up. So to find these numbers, we're still going to divide by the growth rate, 0 0.7, and divide by the growth rate, which is 0 0.7, to go all the way back up and get our zero value. So in your calculator, take 2.21. So the next thing, 2.21. And then we're going to divide it by the growth rate because we're going up. So divided by 0.7 gives us 3.16. And we're going to stick with two decimals since we have two decimals before. And then we're going to divide 3.16 by 0.7, and that's going to give us 4.5. So 4.5 is going to be our start rate, our start starting, starting number. So that's our intercept. So right now, just to make sure, if you'd like to, you can definitely go ahead and check. Take 4.5 and multiply by 0.7 and multiply by 0.7. See, the growth rate, if you noticed, did not change. Whether you're dividing or multiplying, the growth rate is still the same. But since our equation is written like this, a times b to the x, we want to have a multiplier. I know sometimes students want to say the division rule, but we're going we're gonna to stick with multiplication. So that means our exponential equation is y, y or f of x, because y is the same thing as f of x, equals our starting value, which is 4.5, because that is right here. And our growth is 0 0.7 to the x. Again, this is a growth that is gr growing down. And <laughs> what does that mean? That means decay. And 0 0.7 is indeed less than 1, but greater than 0. So it is a decay. And if you had, if 100% means no growth, it stays the same, then 0 0.7 means it must have been 70%, which is a 30% decrease, or a 30% decay. And that's all.